All right, so you set up your workflow, you got your process down, you got your boards all set up so everyone in your company can see your customers and exactly what they need and where they're at. Well, the next thing you need is you need actual customers. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna close out of this add board window and then I need to add a contact. Well, you're gonna see over at the corner of this page, there's a blue button that says add contact. Very useful if you happen to be on the contacts page. However, if you remember from our first video, if you click this blue button way up at the top, it's gonna to give us the option to add contacts and other things. So let's use this one since it's a lot more universal. You can click on add contact, and here it gives me the option to start adding contact information, which I'm gonna to need to do if I wanna put anyone into Job Nimbus. Some things are easy, like a first and last name, and other things like an email and a phone number, very important, a website, maybe a little bit less important. Uh, you might look through all of this on the left-hand side, your customer information, and say that's good. On the right-hand side, we're gonna get more Job Nimbus-focused information. For example, what's their contact type? What's their status? Who's their sales rep? Now, this will default to whoever creates the contact in the first place. But if you have multiple people on your account, then you can click on this and they'll appear here so you can assign the correct sales rep. The lead source is another thing that we can choose and assigned to. Now assigned to is slightly different than a sales rep because if someone is assigned to, they could be a production manager, a crew chief, someone else that needs to see them, but probably won't be having all of the communication with that contact and probably not making the same commission off that contact. You can have one sales rep, but as many assignees as you like. Once you get to the bottom, you see where it says gated community and gate code. These are what we call custom fields. They're things that you might want to use that aren't necessarily built into Job Nimbus. So take a minute, look at this contact form and decide if there's anything that you'd like to add. I assume you found something you want to add. Congratulations. Let me show you how to do that. Let's X out of this. Once we've X out of that, we're going to click on that circle in the upper right hand side to go back into our settings because this is a back end change. If we want to add a contact field, we're going to look on the left hand side until we find contact fields and click there. You'll see that gated community and gate code field that we automatically have built in. Now you could delete these if they don't apply to you using the red delete button or we could edit them to be slightly different. But for the time being, let's just add some new contact fields. Click on the Add Contact Field button, and it's gonna pull up this little menu. So first, we have to give the field a name. Once again, this can be anything we don't really care on our end. It could be sunshine and puppies, it could be rainbows or unicorns, but I suggest that you name it something that's gonna make sense to you and your company. For instance, if you wanted to know date of first contact, I might name this field name date of first contact. Then I would choose a type. Obviously, a date of first contact would be a date, but we could also have a decimal, which can be displayed as currency. Very useful if you want to keep currency amounts in here, or if you're not using our estimates and you'd like to use some of our reporting features. You can set it as just a straight number. As a text, text you can type literally anything into. A Boolean, which is just a checkbox, yes or no, or an options list. Options lists are really cool. I can add in a number of different options here. For instance, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. And that would make a dropdown just like the one that we see here when we're choosing our type. For now, I'm gonna set date of first contact back to a date. You'll also see that there's the option for it to be required. This means that whenever a contact is made, it has to be filled out. This is something that we could do for date of first contact, but for other important information, for instance, if you work with an insurance company, you might need a claim number, you might not wanna make that required just because you probably don't have a claim number the very first time you talk to somebody. Let's go ahead and save this. And whenever we make a change in Job Nimbus like this, it's a good idea to refresh the page. So we're going to do that. 
So even from here in our settings, we can click on this blue plus, choose add contact and bring up this pane. You'll see that the data first contact field has now been added. So I'm going to build this contact off camera so you don't have to watch me tighten. And then we're going to walk through the beginning of your journey.